<laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Juigné. Juigné. <laughs> so we go, we woke up in the city of Angers, and now we're in the village of Juigné. And this is day two of the weekend here, where they do vineyards, wine, and hikes. We kind of do this hike where you you walk along almost eight kilometers. eight kilometers, and they set up booths, so you get to meet the winemakers, you get to taste their wine. And it's the first weekend of September that they do this all throughout the Loire Valley. And what better way to start the day than walking and drinking. When you come for the festival, you get your own little swag bag and you're fully supplied with your tasting glass for the day and your necklace so you never lose the glass. You have to be careful because you might spill with it. Hands free, <laughs> but it spills if it's full. You can't walk. <laughs> I'm surprised Wes hasn't gotten his shirt stained yet. <laughs> this is my wine dance. <laughs> Fun fact with fell here, if you ever notice at the edge of a at the edge of a row of vines, if they've planted flowers, it's often intentional and so the winemaker will know if something goes wrong with the flowers at the end of a vine that there might be something wrong with the whole row of vines themselves. Something will go wrong with the flowers before it goes wrong with the actual vines because the roots are so much hardier. We're learning. First stop of the day, this is Anjou Village Brissac. The thing about these is when you're at a tasting, you can spit it out and you're not going to consume all the alcohol. But when you're on a wine walk, you're just consuming all the alcohol. That's not such a bad thing. Some like, you know, bushels of grapes fell are like really packed together. Some of them are a little bit looser. These ones are like really packed. I hear the problem with these bushels is that because they're so packed, there could be more mold in them. It's funny when the French say mold, they say mushrooms. Really? Two people have said that they, when they're trying to describe mold and their English is not so good, they say mushrooms. Oh, maybe because it's like fungus. fungus. Yeah. Oh, how much do you love mushrooms? I don't like mushrooms. I ordered, Felicia ordered Thai food last night and there was mushrooms at the very bottom layer. It's kind of weird. French maybe, French thing. Ooh, it's like a cheese bread, I guess. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I heard cheese and bread. Well, oh, follow me. How do you say that in French? No, no, uh, avance. Or allons-y. So I'm wearing a white shirt today. Total mistake, because today we're drinking some red. Uh, and I have a terrible problem with drinking liquid. It's funny because you stopped after drinking. I have a terrible problem with drinking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll save up our YouTube money and then we'll buy uh, like a chalet with a vineyard and like a side, a chateau, a chateau. what's the difference? <laughs> well, well, one of them. <laughs> How many months do we need to uh, buy a, to buy one in France Let's with our YouTube our, money? Our lifetime. <laughs> well, well, maybe our, 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 our grandchildren, our, our grandchildren. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> with my infatuation with European culture and, and what people wear, and I think that they're very stylish here. Here's something that I really think I could wear and I think it would look good and I'd like to get one while we're here. Like how about this hat? Oh, like this guy pulls it off. I think I could too. This is the last stop of our wine wine. <laughs> our wine I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> too much wine already. We've got some dessert and it's like extra chocolatey. Hopefully the eight kilometers is like balancing off all the French food that we're eating. But I wanted to say yesterday we focused on the region of um, Muscadet, which produces a white French wine. And this, today, we're exploring the Anjou region. So this, these are all Anjou wines, and we have an Anjou red. Every stop along the tour comes with a bit of a snack, and they're pairing their food with their wine. So that's something, maybe we'll have to do a video of like food and wine pairings that we learned. Please don't go. What a beautiful building this is. What happened to your hat? I was, hiding, I was filming in the tree <laughs> there. We are at the Chateau de Brissac. And so this belongs to the Duke of Brissac, who is alive. His son currently lives here and he's the heir to the throne. 
It's a beautiful castle. Our first French castle that we're showing you. Oh, they're going to take us inside, aren't they? Is that what they said? Um, I don't know about inside, but we're definitely going to see the vineyards uh, that, the, that the owners, the oh, Duke okay. owns. Yeah, yeah he, he's on vacation, but we were going to meet him. We were going to shake hands. He's going to be like, hey, Wes, you know. Next time. But it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, guys. So check out this room. This was like the di this was like the dining hall for a duchess back in the day. So see all these antlers all over the wall. Um, like it's pretty crazy how many there are everywhere. But then Fel Felicia just showed me this picture. I think this is what the room used to look like, and there was a duchess that was particularly fond of venison. And look. That's all, even the roof. That is nuts. What so, what did you get for food? I missed it. Well, we're trying some of the Rosé d'Anjou, and I mentioned that Anjou is one of the wines that this region specializes in. And this vineyard here at the castle specializes in Rosé. And it's really interesting to be with someone who knows their wines because he suggested I pair it with a curry spread on bread and you wouldn't think well I wouldn't think rosé with curry but apparently the flavors are supposed to go really well and it's something I would love to learn more about because I always think like you have red wine with meat and white wine with fish but there's so much more than that and we're just like touching the surface but here it is rosé and curry mm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay, so this is this is rosé. So this is sweet. So I'm learning about. I'm actually learning how like, you know, what what why it's sweet and and, and pairing. Uh, you pair complementary um, um, flavors, but you also do opposites. Felicia knows more about wine. Let's just eat it. What's so good, man? That's really good. Finished chewing. Felicia said finished chewing. Hold on. I never know how much they are. Like, are we trying like expensive wines? Or, like. These ones, it would be like five or six euro for a bottle from their club. Five, five euro. Hell, oh, man, that's not bad. Just kidding. They're not gonna do it. <laughs> What's going on, Phil? Why do you look so nervous? Why do you look so nervous? So I'm like really excited, but also a little bit nervous because we're going on a hot air balloon, and I don't know. Like I've always wanted to do this. But then the fact that we're actually doing it is a little bit nerve-wracking. The guy said like, it's a little too windy right now. So we'll go and see if we can do it. So it's kind of like... I mean, we might end up in a different country <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> up, up. So to test the wind, like right before the, the, the balloon goes up, they, they release a balloon, I guess filled with helium or something. And that just tests the wind direction. I don't know who taught me, but you could test the wind by like throwing grass. So there's some wind, right? But I didn't realize that you also did that for hot air balloons. Like it's a little bit, a little bit concerning. Like it's kind of cool that they can just show up really anywhere with the balloon and the basket, and then they take off. Like where did they land? Is is landing just like a thing that happens when you're in the air, and then the guys following in the car figure it out? It's kind of like wild if you think about it. We're inside the balloon! How cool is that? in the air it's actually a lot smoother than you would think except my hand is trembling <laughs> we're 1200 feet up in the air my palms are so sweaty so I had to have someone to fill for me but it's actually really smooth up here and it's so beautiful I honestly can't think of a better way to see the valley and I think everyone's having a good time. Yeah. Yes, yes. of course. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Landed pretty much in the middle of nowhere and it takes a lot of work for a hot air balloon ride but honestly it was so incredible I was a little bit nervous up there but it's such a beautiful way to see the countryside and oh it was like this was never really on my bucket list but it was such a good experience like an hour since the hot air balloon landed and I guess we had to do sort of like an unplanned landing and we're in a field with no access at all and they can't cut the wires like they can't get a hold of the property owner and so we're just we've been sitting here in the dark but the stars look really cool and I think we're just gonna walk out and then they'll deal with us tomorrow apparently it doesn't happen often um, but what can you do it's an adventure <laughs> 